Hello and welcome to part two of the 5th gen Dodge Viper rear uh, wheel liner diagnostic uh, updated part number whatever you want. Um, the whole thing that spurred this is uh, <clears throat> the installation of these beautiful metal TKO Motorsports vents. The idea is that these get mounted behind the exhaust port of the car. So then instead of trapping hot gases inside the sill and increasing cell temperatures, these provide two functions. Number one, hot gases and, well, I mean, hot air that blows across the mufflers and the exhaust pipes in the side sills can get out of here, out of the vents, and then outside of the car. And then number two, the fact that this might make a replaceable or serviceable plate means this is all you have to take off to get to the bolts that hold the exhaust on, which... I end up having to take that side sill off quite often. So this will be pretty, pretty handy if it works. But uh, as you recall from the first video, the fender liner design for the Gen 5 cars has changed. So um, we're going to do a little bit of magic here and uh, discover how these are going to bolt on to one of the early Gen cars. So um, if we just look over here. And here is the factory wheel well liner. And then uh, next we're going to conjure in the updated part number liner. So uh, let's, let's do a little walk around here. We picked these up from the dealer. We're going to do a comparison side by side. And uh, we're going to have a look. Let's put this down first. So I'm going to pull these up side by side. So here again, here's the old one. 681382778AE left hand side recyclable the old Penta Penta Star and ZD which is the body code of course and uh, made in look at the arrow 9 of 13 and so then here they change the styles here is ZD again still recyclable so this part number supersedes to this part number 682846938 Alpha Charlie another Pentastar, and this is also the same part number that appears on all the later model cars. So you'll notice right away a slight difference. Uh, not so much for the mounting, that's about the same. Hey, but you got a big uh, Preston or Caston X over there. We've got the same brake duct hole. So I've got to drill out these rivets and swap that over. Looks like same mounting point on the top, same mounting point here. We've got, here's these three on the old one, and here, here's these three on the new one. Got a little heat shield action going on. One thing I did notice is over on this side, there are holes on the new one and nothing on the old one. So if anyone has any idea what those are for, I guess they could be for additional fasteners, but, uh, but I don't have any. So we're going to see what it's like to put them in. So here's the biggest difference is on the factory one. Here's this, this glued on dirty, dirty heat shield. And you can pretty much see where dirty exhaust air was, was kind of hitting it. And everything's a mess from how many times I've had that on and off. And so here's the new one. So the updated part number is missing conspicuously. You, know, you get a new heat shield. But look at that. Same mounting points, except for now there's a hole in it with some nut certs that this uh, TKO bracket can fit right in. So let's have a look at that. Let's turn this over and see. These new ones feel quite a bit flimsier, if I'm honest, plastic-wise. So here's the left-hand side one. And right there, this will use the factory, well, a couple of the factory bolts, except for, well, golly, I don't have these four bolts. These bottom two should be the same. These side two should be the same. But now I am four bolts short of putting those in, but I'm sure that I can find some fasteners and all the rest of this should be about the same. So let's just put this, let's put this new liner in and uh, see how it fits. So meanwhile, while the magic's happening, replacing this brake duct, there's two giant metal rivets that hold it on. And I didn't have any more, they're huge but I did have some extra fasteners. So I just threaded bolts and nuts in there. And there's this metal platey thing. So I've just got screw heads. They're lock nuts on the other side and uh, you know, I don't care. Cause I bet you those rivets, 
or 12 bucks a piece or something from FCA, so I'm not doing it. So, there, that's a little bit behind the curtain. And all right, here's something I noticed. Now, uh, because I've got one on the car, this is the new style shield for the right hand side, and this is just the old left. So, this is the comparison is a little bit mirror reverse. So, here's the part where the TKO plate will go over there. But so let's let's look here. So here's the leading fasteners. You got one, two, three. One, two, three. So then as you start to go up, one, one, two, two, nothing all the way around to the other side. So on the old style, there's oops, sorry about the framing there. So the old style, there are two fasteners for the old one that are not used at all. On the new ones and the rest correspond just fine so when you come over meow, and you look at at the vehicle so here's where the TKO plate is gonna go and so then you come up around here and you look at these these here fasteners you got the one and the two and then this hole and this hole have nowhere to go there is no fastener I mean, there's a little flap here on the new, like there's never supposed to be a fastener. So I have got now two extra holes in my fender and then the rest go on pretty well. I'm, if, if I'm honest, I'm not massively impressed. It's definitely a thinner plastic. The fitment is not the best, uh, but I suppose it does install and, and uninstall or easier because it's a flimsier plastic. But it is strange how just they decided to use fewer fasteners. So that means I have two extra bolts for installing this. But I'm still going to be one short. Uh, but let's uh, we'll see how this looks when we put it back together. Okay, so now here is with a TKO plate installed. A um, couple little bits of feedback there because this the fender liner is curved and the plate is platey. Uh, you can see that there's a little bit of a, a thingy in there because it's not a flush three bolt surface. So these two fasteners have to kind of pull the shield forward so you end up with some extra material and there's a curl in there to get everything else tight. And secondly, uh, this one here ain't happening. Uh, with the shield bolted on the underside with those oddball 3 8 bolts, uh, there's no extra material to pull this one in. So there's a a substantial gap but like it's in there really solid so it's not going anywhere and you can look right up inside and see there's the heat shielding and a big air gap on the top so uh, this should should work pretty darn well so let's let's throw this wheel back on and see what's up all right sorry about the bad lighting and the bad audio but uh, we're gonna go for a cruise and I brought a little a little testing thingy to see if this how how affected the heat temperature or the uh, the cell temperatures are with this thing so and uh, take a little cruise here. and they do a crap job repairing them. Look at this. Ooh. It's like, what are you idiots doing? Well, we uh, we ran out of budget after we did the one thing. We'll, uh, we'll resurface the entire road in about 2026, but until then, you know, it shouldn't be too bad. Idiots.
cold on the driver's side. So that'll be the end of this video. Uh, I was kind of, TKO was kind enough to supply we with uh, supply me with some new nut certs. Uh, so all I need is a couple of bolts. I mean everything fits fine. You know there's no clearance problems. It's barely you know, even that corner that sticks out. It's I mean it's it's flush. I wouldn't expect that at all. You know not a bad bad little purchase I think, especially if you're going to be on the track. But that's hey, you know that's why they call it motorsports. So, uh, oof, that's bright. Boop. So that's why they call them motorsports. Uh, they fit. So, um, if you have one of the newer cars, then please hit me up. Oh, let's put this zoom lens back on, or this wide angle lens back on. So, hit it up in the comments or on the forums if. You have one of the newer cars. Tell me if those bolt holes in the fender are still there because that would be an interesting thing to note is if the newer cars actually had fewer fasteners. Um, there's just no play. I mean, there's, you could sort of drill a hole, but the plastic's really thin. So even clamping one of these, uh, these nice TKO factory looking zerts on it, you know, there's, just, there's not a lot of material there. So I mean, it's not like it has to hold the low, the fender liner. But it is really interesting, uh, those kinds of differences that you see. Those holes on the inside of the fender well that we looked at earlier, no idea. Those, aren't, those don't come close to anything else. Uh, I did use one so I could hook the liner and pull it forward to get an, uh, one of the bolts to grab. But those four ones in the back, pfft, no idea what those are for. So again, if you've got a newer car, have a look back there for me, please. And let me know if there's anything over there because I... Don't see squat, but everything else lined up, and uh, so there you have it. So, thanks for watching. Latest.